God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all. Our text this day is the epistle lesson for this day, Ephesians chapter uh, 5, verses 1 and 2, and in verses uh, 8 through 20. Dear Christian friends, <clears throat> as a man was walking to work, and he was hit by a car, but it was a minor accident. And the guy who hit him said, said to him, he says, you certainly are lucky. We are right next door to the doctor's office. The guy he hit said, I don't know how lucky that is. I'm the doctor. <laughs> so, my friends, we look at our text under the theme, fragrant sacrifices and offerings to God. How do we live in this life is important. As we, as we walk through life, how we live is truly important. And the Apostle Paul here in our text this day is telling us that we should not live unwisely. And why should we not live unwisely? Well, he says these words in our text, because the days are evil. The Apostle Paul is writing to the congregation at Ephesus, which was a town in Asia Minor. It was a Greek city that de definitely had uh, many beautiful buildings and everything about it. In other words, it was a, it was a place that was bu bustling with, with all kinds of business and that. And yet, what does he say? Because the days are evil. Because Paul saw there in that community of Ephesus, he saw all the sins that mankind can commit. He saw their immorality, hatred, dishonesty, prejudices. Today, if the Apostle Paul landed here in America, what would he say? He would say, the days are evil because we live in a society today of immorality. We live in a society today of people that are dishonest many times. We live in a society of prejudice. We live in a society there's hatred. And so all the things that Paul speaks about here is in America today as they were there in the ancient Roman Empire. You and I need to see that in our life. And so the call that Paul gives to you and me today is the call that he gave so many centuries ago is still there for us. And so what does he tell us to do? He says this next. Wake up, O sleeper. Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. He says, don't be foolish. Don't live your life foolishly. Live it with wisdom. That's what he's calling on you and me to do. Did not be foolish in our life. And so often we look back at our life and we can say, boy, that was a dumb thing to do. Or that was a, 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 so forth down the line that we go. And then he tells you and me here too that we, we, we are people that many times we don't want discipline in our life. No boundaries. In other words, I, live, I want to live my life freely. Do what I want to do, not do what I, I, I If I don't want to do something, I won't do it and so forth down the line. Yes, so we want, to be, we want to have no boundaries in our life so often. That's our sinful nature again. Sorry, in Kierkegaard, he told a story. And his story was about a, a, a wild duck. And this wild duck's flying south, you know, this time of the year. And as he's flying over a barnyard, he sees a tame ducks down there. He sees corn laying on the ground and so forth. And he swoops down, he sits there with the, the tame ducks, and he eats corn. Boy, this is great. He's got the food right there for him. They, they feed him and so forth. So he stays a while. Finally, he stays all winter. Next spring comes and he hears, he hears the noise of his fellow ducks flying north. And he, he feels that call. And he wants to go with them. Tries to fly. He can't fly. Why? He's too weak because he wasn't flying. He was sitting there he, taking life easy and he, as he lived there on the corn being fed to him. You and I sometimes can be that way in our life. We want to take life easy, and then we can't really live the way God wants us to. Bishop Cholton Sheen once said this. He said, the difference between a river and a swamp is that a river has borders and a swamp has none. And sometimes we human beings are tempted to live like a swamp. Yes, like, like a swamp. 
But we, what we need, we need to live lives that have discipline in them. We need to live lives that have a border like a river does, so that there's fresh flowing water over there, because you know what a swamp has? Swamp has stagnant water, stinking water, and so forth, and we want to have fresh water, fresh things flowing through us as we live our lives here in this world. And so, yes, we need to do that. The difference in that is discipline. And so he's telling you and me here, make good use of every opportunity. That's not easy for us to do many times, but it's really important to make use of every opportunity that comes along in our life. Opportunities that are important for us, opportunities that are important for our fellow human beings, opportunities where we can serve others. You know, life is short. <clears throat> I, have, I have been one who has officiated at many, many funerals in my life. And I'm always struck how short life can be. I always struck how soon life can end in a person's life. And we should make every opportunity of those days, those hours, those years that the Lord gives to you and me, that we seize every opportunity to live as his child here on this earth and to be a benefit to our fellow human beings here in this world. And so he goes on to tell us this, that we need to seek then God's will. He says this, understand what the Lord's will is. It's not always easy to find out what is, what is God's will for me in my life. But we need to look at the scriptures, and we need to look at our own life, and we need to hear God speaking to us in various ways to find out what his will is for us in our life. There was a young man by the name of Danny, and he was just, he was just going to enter college in the fall. And this summer he had the opportunity, he had the opportunity to go on a mission trip to Arizona to the Indian Reservation. But he also had an opportunity to go with his baseball team for a tour of Latin America, something he had been looking forward to. He wanted to find, what does God want me to do? He finally decided God wanted him to go on the mission trip and not go uh, with his baseball team to Latin America and tour that. And there as he was there, and that mission trip, he felt, thought, he felt that God was calling him to more full-time service to him in his, in his kingdom. God comes to you and me in various ways, and he calls on us to walk with him. He calls on us to serve him in various ways. Today we are celebrating LWML Sunday. And in the church we feel the call that God gives us, the call to witness our faith to others. And so the ladies of our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, many years ago, formed this organization of Lutheran Women's Missionary League because they felt the call that we need to truly witness God, the faith in Jesus Christ and Jesus as a Savior around the world. And so they set mission goals. And their mission goal for, for uh, 2012 to 2015 is $1,830,000, a lot of money that they gather through their mites in various ways in order to bring the gospel into our world. You and I are called to do that in our lives also. What else does the Lord want us to do? Paul says he wants us to worship him. Listen to what he says in our text. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the only place in the New Testament that we hear where we are called upon to sing, to sing for the benefit of believers, to sing to uplift our spirits. And that's what we do when we come here to worship. We sing to the Lord. We sing our praises to him. And that's great that we do that. There was a man by the name of Raymond. He went to church on a Sunday morning. And it was a hot summer day, no air conditioning. And so he's sweltering here in this church. And he finds the service boring. And so he's getting ready to walk out. And just as he's getting ready to do that, the choir stands up to sing. And he says it just sounded like angels to him. And the congregation joined it in and singing. And he knew he was at the part of it that was uplifting and strengthening him. So my friends, it's important that we have song, that we have music in our services. And so when we see the words of the hymns here before us, we need to sing them out. Sing joy to the Lord and truly worship him in our lives. That's something that you and I need to do as we come to worship him. Because that Lord comes to you and me. 
And he comes to you and me to empower us. He empowers us to believe. He empowers us to live as his children here in this world. And how does he do that? I showed the children this morning a piece of wood, an apple, and the Bible. God comes to you and me to give us the strength to live our Christian life and to be ones that witness that unto others. And he does that through God the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit comes into our hearts and into our lives as we read God's Word. God the Holy Spirit came into our hearts the first time when we were baptized. And God the Holy Spirit again will come to us this day through another means of grace as we partake of the Lord's Supper. God the Holy Spirit is there to lead and guide us and give us the faith that we need. The faith that we need in the one that we truly worship, that triune God of ours, that give us the faith to see Jesus as our Savior. We read in our text these words <clears throat> in our text. It says, Christ loved us and gave himself up as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Jesus loved us so much, the sinners that we are, that he became a fragrant offering and sacrifice for us. He became that fragrant offering and sacrifice for us as he was put upon the cross. As he was nailed to that cross, he was nailed there for my sins, your sins, and the sins of the whole world so that we, he would atone for those, and he truly did that. That's the Lord that we worship. That's the Lord we come to here on Sunday morning. And so we read also this in, in 1 John. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. Yes. There's great love. He laid down his life for us, and then on the third day he took it again so that he's that risen living Lord that comes to you and me in day, today and bids us to be ones that walk in his ways at all times. And so then, what did he tell you and me to do? Listen to what we hear in our text this day, where Paul writes, Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love. Yes, live a life of love. He's telling you and me. We can be fragrant sacrifices and offerings to the Lord as we come to live unto him. That we live unto the Lord in our lives. That we dedicate ourselves to him. We do that as we are truly, as we live in our homes and as we, our husband, our wife, and children, that we are worshiping our Lord there. We're living our lives unto him every day at our work, whatever we are doing. We can be ones then that truly live unto that Lord. And so then, my friends, let us be fragrant sacrifices and offerings to the Lord. Our challenge is, then, is to imitate, be imitators of God as dearly loved children and live a life of love. Amen. The peace of God was passed on understanding. Keep your